The Honourable Jane Byron. Man, you deputy president. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're Bell Mine Air Associated Dieback is a, is a major threat uh, to the ecological sustainability of vast areas of New South Wales forests, and particularly in the North East. The North East Forest Alliance have actively raised concerns about about this as far back as 1992, and former Greens MLC Ian Cohen raised concerns about bellbird dieback on the 2nd of July 2003 during the National Park Estate Reservations Bill debate. I recently visited the border ranges and was shocked to see the current state of the forest due to the bellbird dieback and how the once delightful sound of the bellbird now heralds their domination and destruction. When a forest comes under stress, especially from logging, weeds, particularly lantana, invade and opportunities opportunistic bird species such as the bell miner rapidly multiply. Although native, mobs of these aggressive birds chase away insect-eating birds, allowing sap-sucking psyllid insects to breed in plague proportions, causing the death of many forest trees. Such tree loss has dire consequences for local economies, including tourism in World Heritage listed areas and for the environment, including erosion and loss of water quality. In the 1940s and 50s, there was extensive defoliation and dieback due to insect outbreaks in the highland forests of New South Wales and Victoria. Also in the 1950s, state forests of New South Wales instigated dieback, investigated dieback in Sydney Blue Gum Forest on the central coast and found it was associated with defoliation by psyllid insects. Bellbird dieback has affected over 100,000 hectares of northeast. New South Wales forests and the millions more hectares are under threat. It continues to spread into forest types previously unaffected. BMAD and Lantana invasion are both recognised as key threatening processes under the Threatened Species Conservation Act. Mr West, Minister for Conservation and Land Management in Parliament, referred to dieback due to insect attack on the 2nd of February 1992. The, the issue was then referred to in Parliament by Ian Cohen in 2003. Major government departments, including Forest New South Wales, were a part of the BMAD working group which produced the BMAD strategy in 2004. The strategy produced a series of actions that needed to be actively implemented. There is also a national Lantana strategy which highlights the need for increased responsible action. Despite producing a BMAD strategy designed to guide action to combat this rapidly spreading threat, recognised as a national significant, essentially little of value has been done. The Forestry Corporation are doing next to nothing to control this destructive disease. In 2009, they logged two compartments in the Yabra State Forest in excess of that legally allowed and undertook birding operations in September 2009, which got out of control. Logging and excessive burning destroys the canopy, allows the lantana to proliferate and enables the opportunity bell miner birds to flourish, resulting in increased psyllid attack, resulting in dieback of significant amounts of forest. The regulatory authorities issued six penalty infringement notices and four warnings for illegal logging. Following complaints, inspections of the forest in 2012 with the CEO and forest experts resulted in an agreement to rehabilitate some areas of forest by controlling weeds and planting trees in areas of poor regeneration. There was recognition of some weed infestation, but no recognition of BMAD in the rehabilitation plan. Some small-scale actions were undertaken to reduce Santana and to rehabilitate forests along some eroding forest coop roadways. Also, some lantana reduction trials were attempted in Donaldson and Mount Lindsay Forest. But the Forestry Corporation's failure to acknowledge the significant threat of BMAD is tantamount to environmental vandalism. Some four years have passed, and despite these works, the remnants of original forests continue to die. Re rehabilitation works are already estimated to cost more than $30 million. Further spread of dieback will only result in further loss of the forest's economic value for timber tourism and in world heritage areas, honey and other environmental services. More frequent and more severe flooding that can result and will cause further economic losses to the region. Rehabilitation action, if undertaken promptly, should cost less than the productivity losses. Additionally, the loss of habitat is resulting in significant loss of wildlife that rely on the forests. Tragically, the forests are dying, and if nothing is done, it's not done to prevent it, then this and previous governments will be guilty of neglect. 